Coming up in today's video, my boyfriend gets hit on by an 80 year old man. Dumpiona. We get to know the local wildlife. They're coming closer. And we try a very unique variety of dumplings. All that and more, so while you click that subscribe button, I'll get this video started. You guys wanna see something cool? I'm gonna press it. Look at this. Oh my goodness. So we are in the beautiful city of Dalian. It's a city in the northeast of China, not too far away from Changchun, about three and a half hours on the train. And we've come here for a weekend trip. We've started off this trip with a bang with this amazing hotel with this amazing view, which looks over the, uh, I think that's the sea. Is that the sea? That's the sea. Bit of a blonde moment there. Yes, of course it's the sea. Dalian is a coastal city after all, surrounded on all sides by the sea. In fact, Dalian is made up of a whopping 1,900 kilometers of coastline. We have also this massive, like, circular town square, which looks absolutely massive. It's the biggest in China. Are you sure? Yeah. It is. What's happening here? Um, also over here we have lots of people that seem to be feeding the seagulls. So let's start this exploration, huh? We are about to enter the famous largest square of China. Square which is actually a circle. Did you notice uh, around the square there are different uh, statues, sculptures? Oh, there are. There's some there. Of different spots. Does there is there a meaning? Yeah, here in Dalian they also say it's the the square of spots. Really? No, I just made it up. <laughs> Goodness, he really can make friends easily. Where are you from? Uh, uh, Wash the Goran. The Goran. Yeah. Just over here, we have all the people feeding the birds, but of course we need some food. So we are coming to a convenience store. I just asked him in Chinese. Really? How did you say it? Oh, that's amazing! You're so good! Well, I think this is the best possible moment to mention the sponsor of this video, which is actually a language learning app. It's called italki, and through italki, you can actually have one-on-one -on -one customized language lessons with high-quality native tutors. And there are actually 150, over 150 languages that you can learn on italki. So for whatever language you've been wanting to learn, whether that's Chinese, or in my case, German, meine Freund is Deutsch. My boyfriend. I started using italki recently to begin my German language journey. Peking has viele Menschen. Warst du schon in Peking? Nein, leider noch nicht. Ah, uh, Peking is schön. Leider. You can pay per lesson, no subscriptions and no commitment, and to put the cherry on the cake, lessons are priced from only $5. Another thing I really like about italki is there's an option that you can see what teachers in your target language are available online right now for a one-on-one -on -one class. So if you're like me and your schedule's a little bit all over the place, I would really recommend this option. Whenever you've got some free time, you can just sit yourself down and have a class. So if you're interested in trying out italki for yourself and starting your language journey, whatever language that may be, you can check out the link in my description for more information. And the first 50 people who use my promo code italkiblondie can buy $10 and get $5 off your first lesson. So get in there while you can. In the meantime, check out where we are. We're gonna go feed some birds. <laughs> these seagulls are massive. Like yeah. in Australia, our seagulls are not this big. Like these are like twice the size of Australian seagulls. Okay. Do your seagulls in Germany look like this? It's bigger. Bigger than this? Yeah. What kind of seagulls have you got in Germany? Big talk for someone who looks absolutely terrified. <laughs> they're coming, they're coming closer. Well, I'm scared a little bit. Yeah, you want to get attacked? Yeah. Go. I thought I'd impress my man with my bravery and try feeding the seagulls by hand like I saw some other people doing. <laughs> that I am not at all brave. I actually saw someone doing this online and they put the bread in their mouth. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not, I don't want to die today. So we decided to leave it at that. Leave with our lives intact and make our way to the Dalian city center for a wander around. Because Dalian is historically a port city, you can see a lot of foreign influence when it comes to the architecture here, which was quite cool to see. We happened to stumble across a food market, perfect opportunity to hunt down a particular food I've had on my to try list for a while now. I'm on the hunt for something called Menzo. Ay, ay, ay. Here. Yeah, this is Menzo. Hey, 
Look how jiggly it is. What is this? You love it. So that's what gives it that jiggly texture, but on its own, it's quite tasteless. That's why it's absolutely loaded with stuff. Garlic, chili, sesame sauce, vinegar, soy sauce. You can just imagine how whack bangy that flavor is gonna be. Wow, okay. Like it smells amazing and I feel like that texture is really going to appeal to me because I like glutinous-y kind of chewy consistencies and that's exactly what this is going to be. Mm. Oh yum. So nice and warming, garlicky, sesame nutty. <laughs> oh, you want to try? <laughs> Very jiggly. <laughs> The thing itself is not so tasteful, but the sauce is nice. One other thing about Dalian, they have the cutest cabs. How cool is this? Oh my gosh, I have never been in a cab like this. Sisya, so we are going to European town here. You know, give this European a taste of the homeland. Hey, it, it has suicide doors. It also has these like little seats that you can pop down. There's a lot of room for, you can be here with like one, two, three, four, five, six people. Yeah, and, and a lot of leg room. And by no means is every single taxi here in Dalian like this, only like one out of maybe 50, but um, we've had our eye on them. <laughs> One out of 50. Yeah, yeah, if my calculations are correct. And you communicate with the driver by pressing this button. Hello? Oh, you can see it. Can you ask if this is a Okay, we have arrived. And look at this. Look at this Western vibe here. Do you feel like you're home? <laughs> that might be because this isn't just any European town. This is a replica town of Venice specifically. So China has quite a few of these like copy towns. There's like a German town in Shanghai I've heard, a London Thames town somewhere else. And this is meant to model, yeah. Venice, there's even this canal here which is currently empty. Like imagine there would be water here. Yeah, yeah it would be would nice. Be very beautiful with sunshine, 30 degrees would be perfect. We're here in the tail end of winter, which is still tourist off season. So the canal is currently empty, but I've been told the canals will be filled with water and even offer gondola rides once the weather gets a bit warmer. Where are all the people? I have to say it feels a little bit strange because yes, the buildings are very like European styled and the buildings are beautiful, like very impressive, very beautiful. But there's just like, the buildings aren't being used as far as I can tell, like it's, no one really going in or out, not really too many people here at all. There aren't like cafes or restaurants that are open right now, so it kind of just feels a bit of a, a ghost European town. Kind of spooky actually. <laughs> We've just walked past this place, which is actually a restaurant, and they specialize in sea urchin dumplings. I've actually never tried sea urchin before. And you know, Dalian is a place where you need to have seafood, it's right by the ocean, so <laughs> anyway, you can imagine my confusion when I order a portion of sea urchin dumplings and only two come out. Good thing it's only me eating. Derek's not the biggest fan of sea urchin. Oh, yum. It has a very uh, strong taste, right? Very salty. It almost reminds me of like, um, like fish eggs, fish roe. I'm not sure how much actual sea urchin goes in these, but the inside was quite orange, which I guess is good, because the extent of my knowledge on sea urchin is it is orange. Anyway, gotta go feed my boyfriend, as well as myself for that matter. Those two dumplings didn't quite fill the hole, and I've got the perfect restaurant in mind. It's a German restaurant that I found. It actually had quite a nice range of German foods on the menu, as well as an entire German beer menu. The replica town may not have been able to give Dirk that sense of home, but maybe this place can. So what have we got here? Kieserspätzle. What is that? It's, uh, it's like small pieces of noodle. Yeah. And it's uh, three, three different kind of cheeses, like grated cheese on top of it. Let's see, does it live up to German standards? Not bad. We got the German's approval. I ordered myself a plate of sausage, which came with sauerkraut and mustard. What's your sausage technique? Should I have a little bit of sauerkraut with the sausage and mustard? Trust or just... me, I, I show you the, the most delicious combo. For this technique, you're also going to need a pretzel. Ooh, a bit of pretzel. So what? So the technique, you do it like this. So because the fork goes easily through the sausage, yeah. you take the sausage first, then you go into the pretzel. Yeah. Go in with a bit of sauerkraut and mustard and voila. Mm. The sausage is so good. How is it good? Very good. Very good, I have to say. I'm uh, surprised. Good. It uh, comes very close to the original thing. Well, as they would say, prost. 
It's been a lovely day with you in Dalian. But the day is still not over. After dinner, we managed to catch this awesome light show over the water, and the day's fogginess actually came to our advantage here. It made the light show even more epic. We were walking along the water, enjoying the show, when in a very random turn of events, it started bucketing down with snow. This is just so surreal. It's like, I would have thought we're over snow season by now. Like it's nearing the end of February. Like, especially here today, it was like seven degrees. It was a weird weekend of weather, that's for sure. Because the next day, against all odds, we woke up to the most glorious day. It's uh, so different, right, with the sun out? Yeah, it's beautiful. The, the water is so blue. So this is a completely different Dalian. Such a different vibe to yesterday when it was, you know, foggy and a little bit gloomy. This is just brilliant. We are walking along this promenade along the water and it really reminds me of Australia actually. These pathways along the beaches. The water is very cold, I did check. Um, so I won't be swimming in that anytime soon. But since this is China, if there is a body of water, there will be people swimming in it. And if there's an open paved area, there will be people dancing on it. So I think for the two days we've been here in Dalian, we've done quite a lot but there is still one more thing that I really want to do. So yesterday we had sea urchin dumplings, but I've learned that that's only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to seafood related dumplings here in Dalian. And uh, <laughs> there's a dumpling that I, I would like us to try. Dumplings filled with this, hai changzi. Its English name is spoonworm, but it's more colloquially known as penis fish for obvious reasons. And I, uh, I've decided not to show him what this worm looks like before taking him because uh, if he sees what this actually looks like, I don't think he's gonna want to touch it. So we've come to this restaurant to pay over 100 renminbi for a serving of penis fish dumplings, which are apparently a Dalian specialty. So I'm taking this opportunity while Dirk goes to the bathroom to express a bit of my feelings about this sea worm. So this is gonna be my first time trying sea worm. It's something that I've seen at a lot of seafood markets around the world. And it's one of those things that I always see and I'm like, oh, okay, interesting. Um, so I'm not gonna tell Dirk that this is something that I'm a bit nervous about eating because I don't wanna make him feel nervous about eating it but um yeah I'm feeling a little nervous and it looks uh, definitely different to any other dumpling feeling I have seen before as for the outside they're looking pretty standard they look really good they smell really good wow I'm really working overtime here it looks like they have chives inside because mm -hmm. I'm also getting a chivey smell okay um, yeah, yeah you're right and he's actually said like you don't really need to pair it with vinegar or anything um, because there's actually some nice juice inside so I think for our first bite we should probably just try it by itself like no dipping and just uh yeah yeah sure. it was about now I noticed Jock started looking a bit pale it was only after we filmed this that he revealed to me he actually has somewhat of a worm phobia when I was younger <clears throat> when we went for uh, fishing you know you have to put the worm on the hook no? yeah to have the bait for yeah. the fish and I, I could never touch the worm I always said something yeah. Inside me that was like, oh no, I cannot touch this. So in hindsight, I feel super bad for putting him through this, making him face his actual fears. It makes sense now why he couldn't even watch me bite into it. Mm. Yum. It's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of juice inside it looks like. A lot of juice. It's very juicy and it's very, um, really the only flavor that's coming at me is the chives. Um, You've got these bits of sea worm here. Oh gosh, I feel so bad, but he is such a trooper. When it came time for him to try, he just ate it right up. For me, it's like, it tastes like just another vegetarian dumpling. Yeah. I'm not sure what flavors that penis fish actually has because that chive aroma is just so strong. The only thing the penis fish really provided was a slight crunchy texture. I would love to know what was going through your mind in that restaurant because you weren't exactly quite yourself and I wasn't sure whether you had like no problem at all. I mean, first of all, I'm very glad that you didn't show me the pictures before <laughs> I had to eat it. I showed you pictures after, that's for damn sure. I was trying to convince myself, you know, it's not a big thing. Yeah. Just go for it, eat it, have one dumpling and it's fine. Yeah. But the problem was you started. <laughs> so you took a bite, I saw the inside. And then I was like, oh shit, this is getting more and more difficult. And then I was trying to find the smallest dumpling on this plate. So this is why I was also looking down. I was all like, the time. what are you doing? Like, I was looking down, I was looking for like the tiniest dumpling. And then also I had to eat it at once because if yeah. I take a bite and I can see the inside, it would have been even harder. It was quite a challenge, I have yeah. to say. But I'm very happy that I went for it. Yeah. Because I also want to, you know, push my limits. Yeah. And I'm happy to have you. Yay! To, to pick such restaurants for us and try it and... Yeah. Eventually, 
You know, I now have a good story to tell to my friends. I yeah. went to Dalian and had this worm. I feel like we accomplished something together today. Yes. And I think it's a great way to finish our trip here in Dalian. Yeah, for sure. So now we're gonna head to the to the station, yeah. head back to Chongchun and go back to eating our uh, guo bao rou. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching this uh, Dalian vlog with us. I have had the best weekend. Same. Same. Yeah. Very nice city. Definitely a place to come uh, back to in summer. In summer, I would yeah, agree, with yeah. With all the coastline and... Yeah, it was gorgeous today. Yeah. Um, but yeah, guys, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, please and thank you. Yeah, put in an extra like for the worm. Yes, please. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>